there's a few different types of attacks that I wanted to cover here to make sure that you're comfortable with them. They're all roughly the same. They all actually have very similar characteristics, but they're slightly different, and the and the nomenclature for these varies a little bit. So I'm going to go through what a bandwidth flood is, a service request flood, and an application flood. Those are extremely similar, but different enough that you want to know the difference. And then ICMP floods and SYN floods. So a bandwidth flood certainly is the easiest to understand, I think. It's it's very simply put, trying to overwhelm the bandwidth of the target. If the target only can connect to the internet or service internet requests at 50 megabit, great. Let's figure out a way to flood it with 60 or 70 or 80 megabit uh, worth of traffic consistently. That's a denial of service attack. That's really all it takes. And there can be a few different variants of that. Usually it, it has to be a distributed denial of service attack, but it could easily be a single point of attack, either inside or outside the network, because a bandwidth flood, bandwidth is almost an absolute in this case. If you can saturate both inbound and outbound bandwidth, there's no connectivity left. There's no uh, capacity for legitimate requests and legitimate users. So it's just spoofing a bunch of traffic or even figuring out a way to not spoof but have legitimate traffic peak at a certain moment. That is a bandwidth flood. Slightly more precise and exact, but still pretty brutal, is the service request flood. This is a high volume of specific types of requests, like TCP three-way handshake requests or uh, VPN setup requests, or even HTTP requests, that can actually be a fairly easy uh, attack. If you think about bringing up a web page, and I'll show you this in a moment, and just smashing F5 a bunch of times, that is a very, very limited, very low performance service request flood. If the website can't handle refreshing pages and serving pages that quickly, then you've got an effective denial of service attack. Most web services can handle it. Most web services can actually respond faster than I can hit F5 in a browser. But if you've got a million people hitting F5 at the same time, boom, it doesn't work anymore. So the bottom bullet is actually quite important here. The service requests don't actually have to work. They could be login requests. They could be web page requests. They don't have to actually be legitimate, valid. They don't have to have a decent response. They just have to get to the target in a way that the target needs to respond or believes it needs to respond to it. Once you're consuming some type of resources on the target, you're mounting a denial of service attack. Once you've overwhelmed the services it can provide, whether, whether the response is legit, not legit, even error messages, you've successfully implemented a denial of service attack. I'm pretty sure my favorite type of denial of service attack is ICMP and flood attack type. And that's actually because ICMP and, and SYN flood attacks are very precise. They're a little more scalpel-like than the brute force just slamming F5 to refresh a web page. What they do is they actually exploit design weaknesses in the TCP IP protocol stack in many, many devices. I uh, hear a lot of questions about how these things work and why do they still work and why don't people defend against, why don't manufacturers design defenses? Well, it's actually because this is how TCP IP is designed to work. These are these are exceptionally difficult to defend against without potentially breaking proper TCP IP communications. So they're they're slightly different. The SYN flood concept is really about the concept of having a three-way handshake, a TCP three-way handshake, but leaving all of these connections half open and then continuing to send TCP three-way handshake SYN, 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 leaving all of these requests open. On the target, what's happening is the target is trying to service all of these half open requests or SYNs but there's too many going on at any given moment. There's far over the capacity that's been planned for. And the result is that you have to wait, there are the target has to wait about 75 seconds to purge all of these requests. The RFCs for TCP IP state very, very clearly that a SYN request has to be held open for 75 seconds before it's purged. 
if the target can't handle hundreds of thousands or even tens of thousands of SYN requests open at the same time pending for 75 seconds, it's going to blow up. It's either going to shut down or it's going to fail in some unpleasant way, both of which are denial of service. ICMP flood is all about sending tons and tons of ICMP packets to the router in a way that the router thinks that there's a bunch of clients right there on that one port or right there on that set of ports. And most routers, switches, all kinds of intermediate devices have a very limited ICMP table. They can only store a limited number of ICMP addresses or ICMP data in a table, very, very straightforward table. If that table is overwhelmed, it's actually very easy for the target to reset itself. And it only takes somewhere between one and two seconds to reset itself. But for that one to two seconds, there's two things that are interesting. It's not servicing anything. It's not servicing new requests which is a very brief but significant denial of service, it's also turning that router into a hub for that one to two seconds. So it's mirroring traffic because it doesn't want to hopefully drop too much traffic. So it's going to just send that traffic everywhere instead of to the right port. That's fantastic for an attacker because that means we get to listen on other ports, means we get to do other things in places we shouldn't be, Maybe for only one to two seconds, but that might be enough if we if we really carefully instrument our attack. Certainly gives us a peek into what's going on on the other side of a router, which we wouldn't normally get without actually turning the router into a hub. Finally, the application flood. Consider at the application layer, there are very, very specific services that are available, like email services, database services. These are well-known services that have their own APIs, their own ports, uh, different ways to communicate on the network. And an application flood is targeted at those specific ones. So it really could be just about anything that services on the network. Database, you know, SQL Server has its own port. Email has a small set of ports. Uh, web apps typically have their own ports and so forth. Anything that you can reach over the network can potentially be flooded and either denial of service or potentially breaking the service itself. So not much different, but just at a slightly different level, a little bit more elegant, I think.